NVIDIA and AMD are getting into a measuring contest, and it looks like NVIDIA's is bigger. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And before we get into the next-gen GPU measuring contest that's going on between the two titans of the GPU industry, I just want to talk to you guys about something that's a little personal to me, which is the situation that's been going on with my family and my son over the last three to four years. This is something that a lot of people know about with regards to my son's rare genetic disorder. And many people constantly are asking, even in hot news comments, hey, could you give us an update about your son? So I'm here to announce the soft launch of our current family channel that my wife and I are going to be running, just kind of detailing the life that we're going through with raising a rare disease child and all the struggles that happen to go with that. The first episode's out right now. And if you're interested in following us along that journey, I'll leave a link in the video description for you to check out the video. I will say that this is probably going to follow the course of like more nitty greedy stuff stuff that's like only applicable to people who are raising special needs kids, but we're going to do our best to at least keep it uh, engaging and informative and kind of create the videos that my wife and I wish we had when we were first starting out this journey because it was very lonely trying to figure out how do we do with the million different things that our son needs for him. And that's kind of the goal of this channel. It's not to become like a family vlogger, but rather to provide uh, a useful tool for other families who might be starting the journey. Anyways, that's down below in case you care, but a lot of you care about the next-gen GPUs, let's talk about NVIDIA's big RTX 4090. According to the latest reports coming out, it looks like this might be the first gaming GPU with over a hundred teraflops of mighty gaming performance. This is something that two well-known leakers have tweeted about in the last couple of days, indicating that yes, NVIDIA is looking to release a hundred plus teraflop RTX 4090. This makes sense as a marketing ploy. The first hundred teraflop gaming GPU doesn't matter if AMD's consumes half the power, they're not hitting 100 teraflops whatsoever. It's kind of pathetic. The 8102 GPU, in order to hit that, based on what we know right now, needs to be running at like 2.7 gigahertz, which kind of lines up with other rumors that we've seen around that AMD and NVIDIA's next-gen architectures might be that fast, and AMD's might be averaging right around 3 gigahertz. Very, very fast GPUs coming in. But that doesn't mean just because the RTX 4090 with its 100 teraflops. It, just because that beats what we're expecting AMD to have doesn't mean AMD doesn't have anything. But for comparison reasons, in case you don't know, the RTX 3090 Ti, which is the current flagship, has 40 teraflops. So this would be a two and a half times in performance in just raw teraflops, which is which is insane from one generation to the next. But the RX 7900 XT is not looking to be a slouch either, coming in at 92 teraflops of performance, according to one of the well-known leakers as well. So it looks like it's 92 versus 100. However, good time to remind everybody that teraflops are not created equal. Just because you have a certain amount of teraflops on this generation and a certain amount on this generation doesn't mean anything in direct head-to-head -head comparisons. The architecture actually matters. It, the actual way that they process the graphics matters. A older GPU at 10 teraflops could be slower than a new GPU at 6 teraflops. It just really depends on optimizations and efficiencies that happen in the the architecture. So take all of this with not like Nvidia is going to beat the crap out of AMD, but just like, hey, their numbers bigger, which is it's always good marketing. I love big numbers. I cannot lie. I also can't lie that I love today's video sponsor, so let's check them out. My friends, today's episode of Hot News is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. As a man who's lived in two separate countries, being able to use a VPN has been critical to my life. And in fact, this channel is managed in two different countries, so having a VPN can actually be critical to some of the success that we need to have as being a multinational team. And Surfshark VPN helps us out by allowing us to swap the real location of our IP address to anywhere else in the globe. And they have over 32 100 servers in 65 plus countries. Of note, the ones that we really care about is having a server in the US and having a server in South Africa because we can swap our location and we can access services that we might not otherwise be able to access from our geo-restricted areas. Sometimes Catlin needs to access some resources that we log into here in America, but because she's not here, she actually can't do that because they flag it because I'm here in America, but we use the same login and they're just like, what's going on? So if she uses Surfshark VPN, 
transfers it over, she can actually easily download all of the things that we need. But another great feature of Surfshark VPN is the fact that it secures your online data. It can make sure that there's nobody snooping on the communication that you're having between yourself and the websites that you visit. Whether it's your ISP, you being on free public Wi-Fi, it actually helps to protect you and your privacy, which is very important to me. And Surfshark does not monitor, track, or store what you do online, which means that there are no connection or activity logs. And you too can try out Surfshark VPN by going to the link in the video description, surfshark.deals forward slash hot news and entering code hot news to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. And you can try it because they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk and you can just try it out. And in case you want to keep it, you have our link surfshark.deals forward slash hot news and our code hot news to save 83% off plus get those free months. And they also allow you to use one account on an unlimited number of devices. So it's a really great value that they're providing you here. So big thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's episode. And while you're getting a great deal on your VPN, let's also give you some good deals on tech products in case you're shopping around the internet. Reese, always giving us the best tech deals that are out on the internet right now. You can go to our website or you can just pay attention to what we're gonna link in the video description. We got a whole lot to go through. So buckle up, I'm gonna go through them quickly. The Corsair LL120 three pack fan going for 76.70. That's 41% off. That is a mighty fine discount right there. Even GA's closed liquid cooler 240 mils only going for 69.99. That's a nice price, 42% off. The RX 6600, lowest price in 30 days over on Amazon for $340. That is $10 above MSRP, just 10. That's like, that's normal because like there's different variations of like cards that might cost. That's amazing. Guys, do you see it? And then in case you want a different AIO cooler, this time with RGB, Rosewills 240 mils going in for $89.99 over on Newegg and Crucial's P5 two terabyte NVMe SSD going for $150 over on Best Buy. In case you're an Apple person, iPad mini 2021 version going for $400. That's a $100 discount. That's 20% off the lowest price in 30 days. Saving a lot of money. Thank you, Reese, for the host tech deals on the internet. And Microsoft wants to bring you the deal of integrating a VPN for free into your browser. Why? Just probably data collection, maybe. Who knows? Microsoft kind of indicating that they're working on a VPN to integrate into Edge, making it so that all of this is working. The only thing that you should be aware of is that you have to sign in to Edge in order to use this VPN, which is like not great. And uh, it's going through Cloudflare, which you know, there's there's just multiple actors here who could uh, have an interest in taking your data, especially since you have to sign in in order to use the VPN. Kind of, I don't know, we'll find out. But a good thing Microsoft is doing is addressing the fact that repairing your own devices is good. This is from a commission study that they did about the efficacy of repairability on their devices, focusing more on authorized service providers and how they can impact things like greenhouse emissions when it comes to the repairability of devices. And what they found is that uh, it can reduce the average waste by up to 92% and uh, the average greenhouse gas emissions by up to 89%. How? Of course, if people aren't throwing things away, if people aren't just chucking everything into the landfill, no doubt that it actually is better for the environment. And especially, this calls into question the fact that Apple's been pushing since they dropped the charging brick from their iPhones. They said that this was for environmental reasons, which is great. I agree with that. It's a good move. Most people have chargers. If not, you can drop down to the local shop, pick one up. Not a big deal. But not supporting repairability for authorized service providers, not providing repairability for people at home seems to be also a big indication of taking care of the environment. So I'm glad that Apple, as of last week, has their self-repair program that we launched, so we'll celebrate them for that. Microsoft also partnering with iFixit for their stuff. We're seeing repairability come round and round, and I'm glad to see this happening. One thing that was not addressed in this study was the ability of people to repair their own devices and the impacts that can make, but one, I mean, you could extrapolate, obviously you could, you should pay money for a study for this kind of thing, but uh, uh, you want to extrapolate that it's good. It's good when people don't throw things out and are able to take care of it themselves, which you should do to your Bethesda games in case you use them on the Bethesda launcher. They launched the transfer tool for you to get the Bethesda games over to Steam. I'm a few days late on this. I just want to let you know if you have games over on Bethesda, you should transfer them to Steam. They have a utility for that, all of that. And Intel people transferring over to Nvidia, especially as they're trying to develop their CPU division. The design manager over at the Israel facilities for Intel, who is behind things such as Tiger Lake, as well as some Ice Lake development, is now moving over to Nvidia for all of that good stuff which is, you know, kind of fine, especially because Intel's announcing that Meteor Lake is actually almost 
you know, good to go. They're working on it. It's actually booting Windows and Chrome and Linux and that it's it's at a good speed and they're they're hitting good signs with Meteor Lake, which is expected to be the 14th generation of chips that should come out sometime next year. We're expecting Raptor Lake to come out later this year. And yes, we also did get Alder Lake this year, but we're getting two generations in one year. It's good stuff. That's what competition brings you. Regular increases in performance and good up stuff, but it also brings chip shortages. People not being able to get their hands on things. The CEO of Intel, Pat Gelsinger, saying that, uh, hey, I, I was kind of optimistic on 2023 for a uh, chip shortage. It's going to be 2024, especially because the key manufacturing tools are being hit by this shortage, especially for equipment manufacturing, making it so that there's pent up demand and people can't make the things that they need to make in order to make the things they need to make. How are you gonna make things if you can't make things? Don't have the chips for it. And I don't have the cash for the chip of the NVIDIA H100, which is NVIDIA's next generation data center GPU based on the Hopper architecture. They announced this at GTC a little while ago. It's gone on sale in Japan for $36,000. That is so much cash or right around 4.8 million yen. Just to put it in comparison, the previous A100, the previous flagship was uh, 1.8 million yen or uh, $12,000. I could pick up some of these bad boys over on Dell right now for like, you know, 10, 11 grand, not, not 10. I could pick up a T1000 for 400 bucks over on new. I don't have 36 grand. Guys, <laughs> that's a spicy GPU. And this was a spicy episode of Hot News. I'll see you back here tomorrow for more tech news that's out on the internet, bringing the hottest stuff to you.